What's going on, everybody? <sighs> oh, jeez. Seven of you there, no one wants to talk this morning. Ah. I don't have anything particularly interesting to say. Huh, makes me wonder if I turned off comments. Maybe not. Oh my. That's ah, all good. Give me another couple seconds here and we'll get we'll get going. So I'll wait for everybody else to log on. So the one thing one thing I have been wondering, um, I might have a little bit of a gift card or a little bit of money left over from uh Left over from the birthday. I mean, you know how it is. Um, and so I've been thinking about some some stuff to read over the winter. And so I'm wondering, um, thinking particularly around fiction. Um, you have any good fiction? Um, science fiction, novels, fantasy, whatever you got. Any good recommendations? Because I could use some. I need, I need to fluff my library. I know I got a million books in here. But I need to fluff my library a little bit on the fiction end of things. Just want to enjoy a good story for the winter. Bonus points if it's more than one book, because that's how I like to roll. Give me something big. But if you have anything, that would be awesome. And so, honestly, though, I am not seeing any comments today, and I don't know what is up with that. And there are plenty of you here. Um, so I can't see what you're posting, oddly enough. Um, so if there's anything super important, forgive me. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's weird. All right. So I'm seeing all your comments on my phone, just not on, just not, uh, via the laptop. So, so anyway, so if you need something, holler at me, text me. Um, my apologies. I just can't see it this morning. Anyway, let's get going. Ah, it's good to see you all this morning. It is November the 5th. We are in the book Common Prayer on page 509. Um, we are also on the Common Prayer app and then... I'm hoping we're on commonprayer.net. Um, I was on yesterday, pulled it up after prayer to get all the information to post it on YouTube, and that was it had like been hacked, and there was some like advertisement right in the middle of it. It looked like the page, but the text was all some you know some content mill junk. And so I'm hoping that's working. If it's not, my apologies. Um, I, I didn't check it this morning, but uh, I know we've had some issues there. So if you stumble across that, um, my apologies. I invite you just to listen along. So it is November 5th. We are still in a time of waiting uh, as a nation, as a people. And so let us, let us wait in the presence of God. And we see this throughout the, throughout the Psalms, throughout the scripture, that uh, waiting is not, uh, a, is not an aberration of the faith. Often so much of it is the faith. Are we willing to be patient in the presence of God? Are we willing to simply wait on the Lord? Um, and we see the people of Israel, when they do this, find themselves being blessed and find themselves being put to good use um, when they're simply simply wait on what God is going to do understanding that God is the first mover God is the one who moves us forward and that's why we begin prayer this morning because it is God who gets us up God who sends us into the day God who calls us forth to do the work that uh, that that we've been called to do and so we come into this area of prayer to wait on the Lord and to hear from the Lord as we go forth today and so let us do that as we quiet our hearts, bring ourselves fully into the presence of God and fully into the presence of one another as we get ready to pray today. Lord, 
let us pray. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. And we remember as we bend the knee, we do so not alone, but we do so inside the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us, which we celebrated and honored on Sunday and which we continue to hold close to our hearts as we pray the collect for the week of November 1st. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we light a candle for our congregation asking for God's guidance. Our antiphon for today, teach us the fear that leads to wisdom and the love that drives out fear. We read the words of Psalm 25 verses 11 through 14. Who are they who fear the Lord? He will teach them the way that they should choose. They shall dwell in prosperity, and their offspring shall inherit the land. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him, and will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever looking to the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. Our antiphon once again. Teach us the fear that leads to wisdom and the love that drives out fear. We return today to the prophet Joel, reading chapter 2, verses 12 through 19. And the good news is that if this, if these Joel passages have felt like a struggle, and I know they have been for some of you, um, today's passage calls us back to something perhaps a little more familiar and maybe, just maybe, a little more comforting. <clears throat> Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishment. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, 
Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. In response to his people, the Lord said, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no more make you a mockery among the nations. This is the word of the Lord. And it is with great fear and trepidation we dive into our second reading. Um, The book of Revelation, we'll be reading chapter 10, um, verses 1 through 11. And I'm still working um, and trying to learn a little bit about these chapters that we find ourselves reading. Um, Because reflection and commentary, um, good reflection and commentary on Revelation is hard to come by. Um, And like you, I find myself being completely swamped and overwhelmed with this. Um, And I don't have any problem saying that. But here, here's what I do know about Revelation, and maybe at least begins to put a put some kind of a framework around this story, is that Revelation is written by the Apostle John to a people who are trying to follow in the way of Christ in the midst of empire. It very much has this, and if we don't read it through that lens, uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go sideways um, very, very quickly. It is about what it looks like when we are in the midst of empire how is it how does that empire respond and how do the people of god respond and so what we see time and time again and this is very episodic book so one thing happens and the next thing happens and the next thing um it very much works that way and what we see is this constant wave of empire empiring flexing its muscles using its strength um trying to manipulate um and beat down people and we've seen some of this over the last over the last couple of couple of readings, we see these waves of, of terrible things that happen. Um, and they're all obviously metaphorical. They're not locusts actually came, but there's a sense in which something swarms the people of God. We see these constant swarms, and then later we always see Jesus emerging and being victorious. And all of this is washed and covered in the, uh, in, the, in biblical imagery, like in biblical minutia. And so this should sound, even if we don't know our Bibles cover to cover, and there's so much in this that escapes me, but it is absorbed in Old Testament Im- imagery. But so even if we don't get the direct references, some of this should sound very familiar to some of the difficult and unsettling readings that we've read earlier in the year. And so in that, we start to see how these two things want to pull together and how John is drawing on the tradition to help encourage the people who are living in the midst of empire. So that's a beginning. I don't know if that's going to solve the problem, but it's at least a place for us to begin as we try to make sense of these readings. And so again, Revelation chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. And I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head. His face was like the sun and his legs like pillars of fire. He held a little scroll open in his hand, Setting his right foot on a sea and his left foot on the land, he gave a great shout, like a lion roaring. And when he shouted, the seven thunders sounded. And when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and the land raised his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created earth and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, saying, There will be no more delay, but in the days when the seventh angel is to blow his trumpet, the mystery of God will be fulfilled, as he announced to his servants the prophets. 
Then the voice that I heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go, take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who is standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take it and eat. It will be bitter to your stomach, but sweet as honey in your mouth. So I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Then they said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. This is the word of the Lord. In the very briefest of reflections on that passage, he takes this scroll, the word of the Lord, eats it, which is a way of saying getting the word of God into our bodies. When it sits in our stomach, it can churn us a little bit. It can be rough. But when it is shared out of the mouth, it is sweet as honey. It is good news to the world. And so these two things can be true at the same time. The word of God can be super, super unsettling. And nevertheless, honey, a balm, um, sweetness to the world. And returning to our antiphon, teach us the fear that leads to wisdom and the love that drives out fear. For our reflection, we go back um, many generations to the Desert Father, uh, St. Anthony of Egypt, who said, I no longer fear God, but I love him. Profound words for reflection today. I no longer fear God, but I love him. we turn to our intercessory prayer list, um, we do have an addition for today. Um, Wanda Weller invited us to pray um, for her friend Kathy Campbell, who has been hospitalized with fluid on her kidney. Um, and so certainly for that, um, also as we've said a million times now it feels um, in the previous couple of months, um, anytime you're in the hospital these days it's a, a more nerve-wracking experience. And so for Kathy Campbell, as she receives treatment for that fluid on her kidney, we certainly pray to the Lord. And so let us pray. Lord, we have these two things set side by side. They snuck up on us today. Surrounded by what often feels like the chaos of the scripture readings. We would be honest. We don't. They don't always make sense to us. They don't always communicate to us in ways that that are useful. But today we have these two things set side by side that we didn't see coming. You have the prophet Joel, who cries out to the people who are struggling, who feel in exile, who feel separated from God, and Joel calls for a fast. He says, set everything aside and fast, because the Lord your God is patient, merciful, and understanding. And as Joel calls the people and the people respond and say, yes, we will do this, we hear the voice of God who says, I will restore you. Joel calls the fast. And then John, in Revelation, invites us to eat. The angel hands the scroll to John and says, eat of this. Yes, it will sit difficult in your belly at times, but it will be sweet as honey in the mouth. And Lord, in these two images, we can hear your call. That, Lord, yes, at times we are too full of the things of this world. We are too full of our own opinions, too full of our own ways of being, too full of our own self-interest. And always and everywhere, you are calling your people to a fast, not to take things away from us, but rather so that you might give us of the sweetest and most beautiful things. And then you call us to your feast, where we eat of your word, whether it be the word of God in scriptures, whether it be the Eucharist, communion that we absorb, whether it be the love and, and care of friends and family, Lord, whatever, you invite us to just eat of this word and to find it sweet on our lips. 
So as we go into this day, we would ask that you would help us to eat of your word. We would not be afraid of the churning that it sometimes causes in our bellies. Rather, you would help us to taste the sweetness of your goodness. Help us to know it as we walk step by step, as we go to work and care for our families and do our daily tasks. Help us to know the sweetness that you come to bring. And we'll say thank you. So give us the courage to fast. And give us the courage to eat. And help us to come to know your goodness. It's because we trust in that goodness that we lift up those who are on our list this day. We pray especially this morning for our friend Kathy Campbell. And we thank you for the privilege of praying for her. We would ask that you would be with her as she is in the hospital and being treated for fluid on her kidney. And Lord, we ask, we ask for a quick resolution. We ask for simple procedures. We ask for healing. Please be with her as she walks this day. Hear also our prayers for Denise and Joe Carrick for Jim Boone and the family of Mace Ireland, for Ron Garrett and the family of Keith Householder, Rob Rickle, the family of Ken Schrader, Andy Davenport, Gene Alexander, Ray Owings, Jackie Mathias, the family of John Wilcox, the Panzer family, Mike Driscoll, and Terry Shavius. Pray for Anna Owings, Joe Zentgraf, Steve Moorhead, Richard and Deborah Hahn, LaRue Newsbaum, Diane Kuhn, Jean Brothers, Joe Thornton, and unspoken prayer requests wrestling with anxiety, depression, and eating disorder. For Margie Snyder, David Miller, Jean Snyder, and Sherry Armstrong, Abe Weller, Baby Lacey, Carolyn Yost, and unspoken requests wrestling with anxiety and depression. For Susan, for Doug and Diane Hoffman, for Cart Denner, Drusilla Short, Karen Anderson, Amber Ash and Savannah Price, Sandy Suit, Alan Showalter, Jeremy Dutterer, Dave Morschbacher, Perry Lyons, Chelsea Sire, Ann Wilson, Dawn Penny, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, Dave Cunningham, and Caroline Will. Lord, we are not wise enough to instruct you on how each of these requests should be cared for. We just trust you that you will care for them. And so we offer them up to you, along with the prayer requests that we attach to our list wherever we may, wherever we may be. And together we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, if we are to be afraid of anything, let it be the fear of not committing ourselves fully to you. Let us fear that the day will pass without our having lightened the load of another. Let us fear that someone will come looking for you and find only us. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. So thank you all again for being on. I apologize that the comments are not uh, are not working this morning. So um, I'm sure that you all had many wonderful things to say. I just didn't see them. So, and if you were trying to communicate with me again, my apologies. I do not know why it is not working this morning. I promise you, I didn't touch anything. Um, but such is the way of technology. So friends, thank you again for joining in. I pray that you have a wonderful day on this beautiful November day. Um, go outside, get some vitamin D. Um, it's going to be in short supply over the winter. So grab some while you can. 
until we're able to be again together until we are able to be together again peace and good my friends